Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to another battle vid. Now, as you saw, we just compared front facing camera footage of the Galaxy S22 Ultra versus the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And we'll get back to the camera discussion in a second, but thank you for joining this video. And if you guys haven't actually checked out this channel before, hit that subscribe button. And I also wanna give a big shout out to our sponsor of this video, who I actually really like. They're called Bombas. Bombas make some really awesome clothing and they have more to them than just clothing and accessories. So we'll talk about them later on in this video. So we have the Galaxy S22 Ultra and we have the iPhone 13 Pro Max. These are the two top tier devices for both Apple and Samsung. And we compare devices from both companies year in and year out, as you would expect. Now the S22 Ultra is the new bad boy in the market, 6.8 inches in size. Um, and it's got, of course, a new camera housing at the back. Compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max at 6.7 inches with a triple camera setup, uh, compared to the quad camera setup you have on the Galaxy. Now, a couple of things we wanna talk about in terms of specs and sizing. You can see the Galaxy S22 Ultra is definitely larger at 6.8 inches. And you can see just how it compares in size to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I have to say though, both of them are very comfortable to hold in my hands. And though I have larger hands, I think if you like big phones, these two devices will definitely hit the mark for you in terms of size. Now, they have differences across the board in terms of battery. You're looking at a 5,000 milliamp with the Galaxy and about 4325 uh, on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Yeah, it's kind of an odd number there, but you know that doesn't hold them back in terms of battery usage. And we'll get to the battery in a second, but let's get back to the cameras, right? As I mentioned, we've got a multitude of cameras on here. While Apple has stuck with their 12 megapixel uh, sensors for all three cameras, the, the wide, the ultra wide, and the telephoto, Samsung has an array of different camera sensors. The main sensor is a wide 108 megapixels, uh, while they have a, a 10 megapixel 3X zoom, a 10 megapixel uh, stereoscopic zoom, or periscopic zoom, which gives you, of course, up to 100 x in terms of uh, zoom and then we also have a 12 megapixel ultra wide so it's very different and how that does that compare in terms of footage and video now let's take a look at some photos first from the camera to see what it actually brings to the table Now you guys are probably wondering why is there a lot of footage of me just sitting down and lounging with me showing my socks out? It's because those socks are from Bombas. Now Bombas as a company has, was well known for making some really nice comfortable socks and I thought that's all they did, but they make also different types of clothing, but it's not the clothing and how comfortable they are. I'm actually wearing the shirt right now. It's actually their mission statement, which I really like about the company. Their mission is basically one purchase is one app opportunity to give and they've given away 50 million pieces of clothing out to people in need across the US. And I love that statement because whenever you buy something from Bombas, you're giving, they're giving away a piece of clothing item to somebody who is in need. So you're buying socks, which they have, and they have an awesome array of socks there, including some Disney ones as well. And they have this brand new uh, slipper. I kind of call them sock slippers anyway. They are super comfortable. Uh, I love wearing them around the office as, as well as at home because they are warm. And of course they keep me warm here in the winter. And they also have this nice t-shirt that I'm wearing right now. And I have to say though, it's truly impressive to see 
company do something like this. And if you're looking to give and also just bless somebody out there, this is a great place to purchase something that you need and also give to somebody in need. So if you want to do that, definitely use the link down below as well as also my coupon code, which will give you about 20% off. So you can actually purchase something and also purchase some for somebody else in need. So check them out. So now let's go ahead and check out more videos and photos from the cameras of the S22 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Okay, so we're recording with the front-facing cameras, both 4K60, the Galaxy S22 Ultra, and the iPhone uh, 13 Pro Max. So you get an idea, I'm gonna walk into uh, some more lighting to give you a different look, but this should be fun. So let's switch to the right cameras. Okay, so what did you guys think of the images of the S22 Ultra versus the iPhone 13 Pro Max? And also the video comparison. Is it better? Is it worse? I have to say though, it, it's something that, look, you can pick and choose between either side. And I see places where the S22 Ultra does well, especially with the portrait mode and also contrasting to my skin color, which makes a lot of sense for me. Uh, the cameras, in terms of video, I've seen some improvements there, but the iPhone does a lot of great stuff with dynamic range. So I want to know your thoughts down in the description. So cameras aside, what else do we want to see with devices like this? Now, that's one main thing, of course, is the camera. How about, of course, performance? All right, so when we talk about performance, the first thing we want to look at is the displays. Now, both of them have 120 hertz displays with high refresh rates, so which means these displays are smooth and fast, which is great. They also have a variable refresh rate to go from like one, one hertz all the way to 120, so which means your gaming performance would be really, really good. Now, the key thing about the displays that is quite different is the peak brightness. Now, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a peak brightness of 1200, which is pretty bright, but the Galaxy S22 Ultra goes to peak brightness of 1750. That is truly impressive, so which means in direct sunlight, you're gonna get better brightness from the Galaxy S22 Ultra uh, and you can see more of your screen than the iPhone, but the iPhone is no slouch by the way because 1200 is very, very high for any device. Now, the main thing you're looking for, let's get into performance and gaming. Now, let's start off with Geekbench. So you guys know I'm not a big fan of benchmarks, but here they are for you. And here is the uh, CPU score Geekbench for both devices. As you can see, the iPhone 30 Pro Max beats the Galaxy S22 Ultra. This is the Snapdragon version, Snapdragon Gen 8.1. So you're gonna see those kind of different scores there. And if we go ahead and check out the compute benchmark, uh, we can jump into compute right here. You'll see the difference. Now, mind you, one is a metal score and one is OpenCL. There's a drastic difference there. But does that mean there's a drastic difference in gaming performance? And as you know, we checked out a bunch of games for both devices. And if you really want to see more detailed gaming video, go check out our gaming videos for each device, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, as well as the S22 Ultra, which I just dropped about a couple of days ago. So starting off with, of course, the games that we definitely like, Call of Duty Mobile is a very good start off benchmark barometer both of these game both of these devices handle that game pretty well 60 frames per second so whether you're playing on the s22 ultra or the iphone 13 pro max you're going to get 60 fps which is cool now moving over to pubg mobile we see the same results the galaxy s22 ultra does smooth extreme at 60 frames per second the iphone 30 pro max does the same 60 fps when you move over of course to ultra hd ultra both of them do it about 40 frames per second uh, so again it's steady uh, you expect those kind of results here now Moving over to the heavy hitters. We'll start off with Black Desert Mobile. Now we saw recently Black Desert Mobile on the S22 Ultra. We got about 42, 43 frames per second. Now mind you, the S22 Ultra is not available yet, so which means a lot of things are not optimized for it, but we got it playing 
at 42 frames per second. That game has a lot of graphics, a lot of explosions, actions, a lot of things going on. So we tried it on the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the iPhone gave us a steady 60 frames per second. That is something that's truly impressive and it was good to see there. So is this something where it needs an update uh, in terms of the software to, to, to work with this processor properly? We we'll have to actually wait and see if that happens with the Galaxy S22 Ultra. But now you guys are going, what about Genshin Impact? That's the game that the S22 Ultra really struggled with, right? It really went through a hard time. The S22 Ultra did, you know, 42 frames per second with Genshin Impact. And we saw that, I was a bit shocked, right? Now, here's the thing. A couple of you left comments about how terrible Genshin is in terms of optimization. Uh, and I took this comment to heart, you can see it on the screen. So I wanted to go ahead and try out the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And to my surprise, it is bad. It is really, really bad. The iPhone 13 Pro Max actually did, for the same amount of time, 20 minute gameplay, just like the S22 Ultra, did 39 frames per second at the highest settings possible, which is something that, again, I didn't expect because last year I was getting uh, frame rates within the 50s. So something is up with Genshin Impact. And in this case, the Galaxy S22 Ultra does a better job than the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And I can't blame any of these devices because this is an issue with the game. So I have to put it out there for you guys to know that Genshin is something that I might actually have to remove from my benchmark just because it's just not optimized for any system at this point. Now, speaking of which though, even though optimization may be bad, temperatures ran high for these devices. And that's something that's really important when you're playing for a long period of time, right? With the S22 Ultra, we saw temperatures go all the way up to about 108 degrees, uh, roughly around 40 degrees Celsius or so. That was high. Now, luckily we had the cryo case from Spigen, which actually cooled things off a little bit, took a few degrees off. So I was happy to see that. With the iPhone 13 Pro Max, this bad boy ran super hot. I mean, now we know iPhone doesn't have any specific type of cooling within the device, and that's something that noticed quite well. We got temperatures up to 113 degrees, so uh, Fahrenheit going to about 44 degrees Celsius, so really hot. I had to drop the phone down a couple more times because it was really hot at that point. And um, also again, I started noticing throttling. This happened while playing Genshin Impact because that took a very big hit while playing the game. And you can see the game throttle down. Another thing with the iPhone is once it starts throttling, within about 10 to 15 minutes of gameplay, you will see your screen deem down. That is something you do not have with the Galaxy device. So again, as a gamer, it kind of takes away from your gaming experience in there. Now, temperatures, are bad. What about battery life and charging? Now, in terms of battery usage in, in, in gameplay, I think both of them are very similar. I'll give the slight edge to the Galaxy S22 Ultra, but not by much. I think the iPhone still does a really good job. Now, both devices have fast charging capabilities. The Galaxy S22 Ultra here has a 45 watt charger, while the iPhone supports fast charging up to, I believe, 27 watts. Now, Spigen has some fast chargers, which I actually use for this quick test. And it's a little bit different from what you guys would expect. I wasn't doing a zero to hundred. I wanted to give you kind of real world situation. So I have a 45 watt charger here for the S22 Ultra. I have the 20 watt charger here for the iPhone. Uh, now I wanted to see what it would be like to you uh, get a fast charge from zero uh, to a certain amount within 10 minutes. Say for instance, you need to leave your house quickly, but you need a quick charge because your phone's dead. So 10 minute time frame. also looking at a uh, 20 minute time frame if you have a little more time, and 30 minutes say you're in a coffee shop and you've got some time to sit down and chill. So within 10 minutes, the iPhone gave us 14% charge uh, using the charger, while the Galaxy S22 Ultra gave us 22 minutes. So within the rush, you're gonna get more charge of the Galaxy. Mind you, the Galaxy does have a 5,000 milliamp battery compared to the 4235 on the iPhone. Now within 20 minutes, the iPhone gave you 29% uh, uh, battery charge while the Galaxy gave you 45%, so almost halfway full on the Galaxy. And in 30 minutes, if you have a little more time and you've got time to chill for a little bit, the iPhone gives you 44%, which is good. Again, almost halfway. 
and the Galaxy gives you 65%. So those are kind of real world scenarios for using your device or charging. And you can clearly see a 45 watt charger is better. Now we know other companies have 65 watts, 80 watts, 120, and those things are super fast. Not trying to compare that. I just wanted to see what it was like in true real world scenarios for both devices. In terms of gaming and game services, now you guys will probably ask me how well do they work? And honestly, that is something that both do really, really well. Now, Xbox Game Pass is the premier game streaming service that we know of. And they both run well because of course they run over either Wi-Fi or 5G and they, you get 60 frames per second pretty solid. What I really wanna show you is some of the accessories you can actually use with those devices quite well. With the iPhone, you have of course things like the Backbone controller, which doesn't really work too well with the 13 Pro Max just because of the new design. It's a little bit wobbly. It can slide out as you guys can see here. Uh, but the Razer Kishi does work well with it. So that is something to take note if you're looking for a controller for that those gaming needs you can actually go ahead and pop it in as i'm trying to do on screen here and boom your kishi will work and you can use it quite well now with the galaxy you do have a few controllers you can use the kishi definitely works well that's a standard right there um, you've also got this one from gamesar this is the x2 type c that also works well with this now some people have asked me about the pixel the Pixel works well on this controller as well. So your gaming needs are actually fully met with all those different aspects. Now, before we continue, there's also the issue of speakers and sound. Now we've done a speaker test for both devices with the Galaxy versus the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Go over there to take a quick listen, but but honestly, it's really, really close with both devices. And I think it depends on what your listening ear is looking for and what kind of sounds you definitely like. In terms of extras and, and fun capabilities, both devices, of course, have different natures. Now, the S22 Ultra has the S Pen, which, of course, allows you to write notes and also use S Pen functionality, which is something the iPhone just doesn't have. And that doesn't take away from the iPhone's usage. It's just a different set of uses that the Galaxy does have and brings to the table. So if you're looking for something like that, that might be it. The iPhone itself is something that has a ton of apps and also a lot of cross functionality with Apple devices. And that's something that you cannot get anywhere else other than the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, as we look at everything with both devices, there are pros and cons that you can go with and say, hey, one is better than the other. When we look at the cameras, this is a tougher thing to actually measure because there are instances where the Galaxy does a really good job compared to the iPhone, and there are instances where the iPhone does a better job. I think it depends on your preference and what you're looking for. Uh, in terms of gaming performance, same thing again. It's very similar there. And in terms of battery life, of course, and battery charging, the S22 Ultra has a slighter edge. What I really want to know from you guys is what do you think in terms of performance from both devices? Do you think the iPhone 13 Pro Max is better? Or do you think the Galaxy S22 Ultra is the new king? The Note is back with the new name. Do you think it's come in and done so much more? Let me know what you think, guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.